Yeah. Yeah, hello and welcome to the A-League Agenda presented by Neds. I'm Daniel Garb. This is Robbie Cornthwaite. And we've got our grand final matchup and it is an absolute beauty. Robbie, the Central Coast Mariners against Melbourne City. It's David v. Goliath stuff. It is. It's going to be absolutely massive. The two best teams all season, obviously. Uh, Melbourne City uh, got the big backing. They've certainly done big things in the last couple of years. And then the Mariners building nicely over the last couple of seasons into their first grand final in a decade. Certainly the underdogs, but uh, it's a game I'm really looking forward to. So the week off's really interesting this year, a novelty as part of this season. I think it might help the Mariners because there is a worry that a team that hasn't been on the stage for a while might get spooked. Perhaps an extra week just to get their head around things might assist them when it comes to stepping out on that big stage. Yeah, you certainly make a good point. I'm a little bit more of the other side where I think maybe they could lose a bit of momentum. I think um, obviously they've played Adelaide three times in the last three games for three wins. So they've kind of got their confidence up playing against the, the team that they've found really easy to beat this year. But now a little bit of a break. How do they carry forward that momentum into the grand final? And Melbourne City, they're just such a, a well-oiled machine. You wouldn't think anything would really knock them off their stride. So um, I think it's advantage City in that sense. But it's set up beautifully because it is David v Goliath stuff. I mean, the Mariners have been a laughing stock in the A-League for the past decade. Melbourne City have been utterly dominant, backed by the richest football group in the world. Scott Jamison uh, did speak about all of that during the week, of course. Everyone's been speaking about the Central Coast Mariners being the underdog, and he said, yep, I've heard a lot of talk from them about that, but money doesn't buy his success. Uh, it certainly helps, Scott, but you've got to put it all together, of course, on the field, which his team have done uh, over the journey, of course. But the Mariners, they should be playing that underdog card. Oh, most definitely. And I think every football fan in, in the country whose team's not in the finals and doesn't go for Melbourne City is on the Central Coast bandwagon. You're hearing a lot of arguments made for Central Coast, and they are in with a real chance um, and, and Jamo's right to a degree, but certainly it took Melbourne City a little bit of time once they got that investment to really put it together. And now they've built a really strong culture and foundation and it's proving fruitful. Scott Jamison is retiring, of course, what a leader he's been for that football club, both on and off the field, never afraid to uh, to shoot from the hip, as we uh, saw in that quote before. But uh, he's had to be humbled this season because he's lost his starting 11 spot and he still led that side with a plum. Yeah, I mean, that's a sign of a true leader. I think uh, his move to Melbourne City has probably been the making of him as a man and as a player. Um, sort of seen as maybe a bit of a kid for a lot of years, a guy that liked to get under players' skins and, and mess around and, and love that bit of niggle. Uh, that's probably what he needed to do to play at his best. Um, I would have loved to have seen him play in the Socceroos. I think he was good enough and just maybe never got an opportunity at the right time, but a city legend. And if he wins on uh, Saturday night and lifts that trophy again, I think he'll be the most successful captain in A-League history. So it's uh, some career congratulations. Plenty of game breakers in the Melbourne City side. Matthew Leckie is the one that stands out for me. We know he can do it on the big stage. He did it for the Socceroos, of course, against Denmark at the World Cup. So uh, he won't be overwhelmed by the situation one little bit. So experienced, had a really good season. Perhaps we speak about McLaren and Tilio a bit more than Leckie, certainly over the last couple of months. But you just look at him in that starting 11 lineup and you go, wow, he could really have a big impact on this game. I mean, he's got all the attributes to be in that front third and cause plenty of problems and score goals, but he brings so much more than what your, your typical winger would bring. Yeah, he's kept, he's lost a little bit of speed, but he's still got plenty of it. But whether he's causing issues or not, he's always involved in the game. He loves a battle. He loves a tussle. Defensively, he puts in a, a, a wonderful shift. He works so hard for his team. And no matter what, he'll have an influence on this game. It could be Jason Cummings' last game for the Central Coast Mariners, which would be a great shame, but maybe he is going to deliver something special if that is the case. Well, I hope so for Central Coast's sake. He's been an absolutely wonderful signing and one of the biggest characters uh, in the league's history. Um, scored plenty of goals, went to a World Cup, and I just wonder whether Australian football is going to survive if Central Coast <laughs> and Jason Cummings lift the A-League Championship. You know he's going to be giving absolutely everything he can, and... He was full of praise for Nick Montgomery saying if he'd had him as a coach a bit younger, he'd be playing in the English Premier League hmm. right now. So high praise and um, yeah, obviously he's been a, a huge asset to the league. Yeah, and he brings uh, all those other attacking players at the Mariners into play. Uh, it all revolves around him. One of those players is Sammy Silvera. He's your Mariners game breaker. He is. I think he's had a tremendous uh, finish to the season. He's scored plenty of goals this year, goals in big games, and he took... Javi Lopez to the cleaners in the two games against Adelaide United. A guy who's aging but is still one of the best right backs in his in the league on his day. I think 
City's weakness might be down that right-hand side. Who starts at, at right back if it's Talbot or, or Galloway or Nuno Reish? So that's an area I think that Central Coast can really exploit. And with his um, ability to get in between the lines and, and maybe drag a, a centre-back out wide, a Curtis Good, um, he might be able to expose City a little bit uh, in those in those wide areas. Quite funny, in the coaching ranks, you'd think Melbourne City would be the more settled side considering everything that's gone on at the Central Coast Mariners in recent times, but it's not the case. City have had a change. Paddy Kosnorbo out, Rado Vitasic in. Nick Montgomery's been there all season. Um, and he just seems like he's ready for this stage. Everything about him is so calm, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. I mean, he's been absolutely amazing for Central Coast the last couple of seasons. Obviously, Alan Stajic uh, set the foundations three years ago, but he's a guy that's just oozing passion and confidence at the moment. You hear him in the media as well, biting back at comments from <laughs> Scott Jamison, the man we spoke about just before. He did it. Uh, in the semi-finals when Carl Viet said a few things he wasn't happy with. So he's got his players absolutely humming at the moment and uh, he'll go in there giving them plenty of confidence. All of these talking points, of course, are fantastic to discuss in the lead up to the grand final on Saturday night. Before that, though, we have the awards night and the Johnny Warren medal. And there are so many great options this season. Most of them Australian, which is refreshing. Jamie McLaren, of course. Brandon Borello from the Western Sydney Wanderers and Craig Goodwin, who is my tip. Do you differ on that? Oh, I think it's hard to go, go against Goody the season that he's had. I think 15 goals and 10 assists, something like that. Always turning up in the big game for Adelaide United. And he was a guy that really dragged the Reds into third position. I'm not sure there's a player that has more influence on his side in the league than Craig Goodwin. And I think that's the real sort of test of... Um, you know, who's the best player in the league, scoring from every angle, leading the team really, really well. Thought he probably should have won it last year. Wasn't too upset that Jake Brimmer mm. uh, took it out because he had a fantastic year, but I'd be really surprised if it's not Craig's season. So Jake Brimmer, the reigning Johnny Warren medalist, prior to him, you have to go back 10 years to Nathan Burns to find another Australian uh, that has won it in the last decade. So with Borello, Goodwin, McLaren all contending, we should have back-to-back -back Aussie winners. Watch out, though, for Oscar Zavada of Wellington. Great season. He is my smoky tip to perhaps be the party pooper. But uh, Goodwin, Borello, McLaren, you wouldn't begrudge any of them taking out the Johnny Warren medal. Can't wait for that. What about our combined grand final 11? You and I have debated this during the week. We had a bit of an argument, I've got to be honest. <laughs> um, eventually, youth won out, and then uh, I got a couple of plays that I wanted in. But Danny Vukovic is our goalkeeper. Uh, the back four is uh, Storm Roo, Brian Kaltak, Curtis Good and Geordie Boss. We've gone for Nisbet and O'Neill in central midfield. Matt Leckie on the right wing. Marco Tilio on the left wing. And then what about the strike force? Jason Cummings and uh, Jamie McLaren. So six from Melbourne City, five from the Mariners. That shows how even this grand final is. Yeah, and speaking of Aussies for the Johnny Warren medal, just one foreigner in the 11 as well. So Aussies doing great things uh, at the pointy end of the season. I thought Danny Vukovic and maybe Tom Glover it was a bit of a toss of a coin for me. I thought Glover particularly against the Mariners this season, has had two tremendous games, made a couple of big saves against Sydney FC in the first leg of the semi-final as well. For me, that was a toss of a coin. Um, and I feel a little bit bad that Tulio's not in yeah, there, but yeah. with the formation and, and that sort of thing, it was hard to squeeze him in, but he'd be first off the bench for me. Yeah, for me, it was the intangibles of Danny Vukovic, the leadership and the way in which he's controlled that uh, back four that made a big difference. But yeah, Benny and Cololo, Sammy Silvera, Marco Tulio, Tough to leave them out, Very. but it shows the attacking quality uh, that is on show for both sides uh, that we've had to settle uh, for Tilio and Lecky above them. And there is obviously no harm in doing that. Let's get into the five-minute primer, Rob. We're going to break down this grand final. You're going to tell us who wins and why. So many angles to pick apart in this one. So let's get the clock going. Um, what have you learned from their two meetings this season? Their game they had against each other at the end of the campaign finished 1-1 it could have been 3-3 and that summed up how exciting this grand final might be yeah well uh, the thing i've learned is that both defenses are, are vulnerable against these attacks i think um the chances that came in in the first and second legs there was chances galore and it, it took something really special from geordie boss to break the deadlock i think tom glover was probably man of the match in the the this this contest that we're watching here danny vukovic made a number of fine saves as well um nisbet was lucky to score with a, a deflected effort 
but certainly there's going to be chances out there and it might just come down to who takes them. So many talking points in this game. One of them is which of the Aussies might stand up and nab a spot in the Socceroos squad for that mouth-watering contest with Argentina, of course, on June 15. The rematch uh, following uh, that round of 16 game at the World Cup in Qatar. And there are plenty of players who might stand up. Aidan O'Neill might nab a spot. Curtis Good might come from the clouds and get back into the squad. There's Jordan Boss, of course, McLaren and Cummings. So that's going to be one for Graham Arnold to watch with interest. Yeah, and I'm sure Arnie is really pleased to have so many players still involved. You want your best players playing football and being prepared to take on the world champions. They've They've shown that they can match it with Argentina at the World Cup and now they've got to do it again in a friendly. There's, like you say, opportunities maybe for some lesser lights to get an opportunity. Geordie Boss has just got to move to Europe and, you know, imagine for him in the space of a month or two, gets a move to Europe, wins an A-League championship and premiership and makes a Socceroos uh, appearance against Argentina would be some way to cap a season. Josh Nisbet is perhaps unlikely to make the Socceroos squad, but you wouldn't rule him out because he continues to uh, defy the knockers. He won the Mariners medal this season. What a brilliant effort from him. He's one of the youngsters in this Mariners side that you're keen to watch with Maxi Ballard in the centre of midfield and several others like Semi Silvera, who we mentioned before. The occasion... Can they handle it against this Melbourne City side where so many of them have been there and done it before? I think they can. I think the second leg against Adelaide United at home was probably a really good warm-up for the occasion. We had a full packed stadium on Gosford. Um, all the pressure and expectation was on them to get the job done coming into the into that second leg with a lead. And, and they showed up. They completely outplayed Adelaide United. They didn't look overawed at all. They took the game away from the Reds. And... I think that's a really good sign heading into this grand final. What are the matchups you're looking forward to seeing in this one? I think Jamie McLaren up against Brian Kaltak is going to be really fascinating. Um, McLaren got on the score sheet in the first game against the two sides, but kaltak has got all of Vanuatu behind him. I think B <laughs> BBC in Vanuatu is showing the game, so he's got a whole nation uh, backing him. We know he loves to patrol that penalty area, uh, dominates the clearances and, and block shots. He's lightning quick, so... That's going to be a really close matchup. Another little subplot is Jamie McLaren missing a penalty against the Mariners. Danny Vukovic making a save in the first game between them this season. So if there is a pen, a little bit of mind games, and if we go to a shootout again, that's going to be a really interesting one to watch. I don't mind Benny and Kololo up against Geordie Boss, mainly because you've got to track Geordie Boss the other way. And if you don't do that, he will cause lots of problems. So the battle down that flank will be really interesting. Melbourne City have been dominant, we know that, over the last few years, but they've also had some grand final failures. Can that play on the mind? I think it can. I think it can spur you on as well. I think, um, obviously, losing against Wesley United is going to give them uh, you know, a lot of motivation to go and win one. Again, Jamie McLaren hasn't won an A-League final. That's another huge thing. But you know, going into this game against Wesley United, they were probably expected to win and didn't. So um, you know, whether that's in the back of their minds, they don't want to fail for a second time. We mentioned Scott Jamison. I think he's lost something like five or, or more A-League grand finals. So he'd want to go at uh, a winner. And I think, if anything, that's going to make City even sharper. So a tip for the grand final, Robbie, and your Joe Marston medalist as well for best on ground. Well, with all that said, I'm going to stick with the best team all season. I'm going to say Melbourne City to win and Jamie McLaren to score and win the Joe Marston medal. What about you, mate? I like Central Coast Mariners. I think if it gets to extra time and penalties, Melbourne City might have the experience. But in 90 minutes, the Central Coast Mariners and Danny Vukovic is my Joe Marston medal tip. I think the Mariners attack can cause lots of problems, but they'll need him to have a big game at the back. And I just feel like it's all building up to the perfect story for Danny Vukovic, who of course had some heartbreak with the Mariners in a grand final so many years ago and the red card and everything that followed on from that. Just maybe it's going to be the perfect ending for the Mariners skipper. So he's my Joe Marston medal tip. What about you in the grand final party five-a-side game on Friday night? What can we expect from Big Cornflakes? Uh, not much, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. I think it's been about two years since I've, I've kicked the ball. So if I get through unscathed and no injuries, I'll be more than happy with that. Um, obviously up against uh, the NSL legends. So interesting to play against a couple of those guys and, and catch up with some old faces as well. Make sure you get down there and check it out if you can. Yeah, it's great that uh, the two parts of the game are coming together, the NSL legends and the A-League All-Stars as well for a five-a-side game, but there are plenty of other battles that are going to be taking place, including a Central Coast Mariners legend side up against uh, the Melbourne City legends. Get down to Moore Park on Friday night for the A-League Grand Final Party as we build up to Saturday evening. The Central Coast Mariners and Melbourne City, we can't wait for it. Get your tickets if you haven't already. This has been the A-League Agenda. It's been a lot of fun. Robbie Cornthwaite, thanks so much. Thanks, mate. Thanks to you for watching. Bring on the granny.